Man, I really wanted to use this deck, but it's hard to see on camera. Maybe next time. So in that case, let's use one of my favorite basic decks, the classic Nox. I just love the minimalism that they got here. And I'm gonna need the help of the two jokers for this trick. So I'll put one off to the side. I'm also gonna need the help of two spectators. So spectator number one, gonna have them select a card. Let's just say it's the four of diamonds. Doesn't really matter if I see it. I'll put it sandwiched between these two jokers face down. And then we'll lose these two jokers somewhere in the center of the deck as well. There we go. And now we need another card selected. Let's just say this one, spectator number two selects this card. We have the queen of diamonds. So I believe the first card was four of diamonds. This one's queen of diamonds. If I'm wrong, I apologize. So quickly, just to recap, we have the four of diamonds, first card selected, and then we have the queen of diamonds. But the four of diamonds is sandwiched between the two jokers, which are sandwiched somewhere in the center of the deck. But now I'm gonna take the queen of diamonds and lose that somewhere in the center as well. That's queen of hearts, by the way. But queen of diamonds, I lost somewhere in the center. But if we spread out the cards, we're obviously going to see what we should see. Pack of three cards, one card sandwiched between the two jokers. Now the jokers do something special. They never sandwich the card that was selected first. They always sandwich the most recently selected card. So in that case for us, it was the queen of diamonds. If we take a look, we have the queen of diamonds. I think that's pretty impressive. But like I said, they sandwiched the most recently selected card. So between the two jokers, the most recently selected card after the Queen of Diamonds, once you give the deck a cut, is of course the Four of Diamonds. That means once we spread through and find those two jokers, there should be one card sandwiched right in between. And of course that is the Four of Diamonds. Boom. Really just been enjoying this darkness lately. I think, is it too much? What up crew, it is Magic Monday and this is your place to learn magic, master your performance and captivate audiences. To give you some background on this effect, I originally saw it on Miss Mag 822s channel and it was called Cold Cut. And I changed it up a bit, put my own spin on it because I just wanted to have a bit more fun. Now before we dive right into the tutorial, make sure you smash that like button, hit subscribe and get ready to share with all your friends. Now grab your favorite deck and let's do it. All right, yo, let's go ahead and break this down. So to start, of course, you just need an ordinary deck of playing cards and there will be some technical work or moves required, okay? Um, I would rank this probably somewhere between high-end, beginner, low-end, intermediate type effect because of the techniques that are involved, but we'll get more into that in a second. To start, you could have the deck shuffled if you'd like, but take out the two jokers first, or any two of a kind that you'd like. I just like using the two jokers. Put them on off to the side. Ideally for this trick, you want two spectators. Uh, each spectator is gonna select the card like you saw in the performance. The reason why I don't do just one spectator is because sometimes they forget if they select two cards, Sometimes I forget if I select two cards and I, I I do this all the time. So spectator number one goes in for the kill and selects a card. Let's just say it is the Jack of Diamonds. You're gonna take the Jack of Diamonds and sandwich it face down between the two jokers like this. Take this whole packet of three and put it on top. You tell the spectator you're gonna lose it somewhere in the center of the deck and you're not really losing it. What you're doing is controlling this top card to the bottom. That's all you really wanna do and keep it face up. So you can do it any way you like, but the way that I did it in the performance was I did a double or triple undercut. The way that it works, I peel up the top card like this, grab a break underneath that card, and I'm doing this as I'm talking as a form of misdirection. If I just sat there and did this, I'd look like a moron, all right? So you do this while having some level of misdirection. Now you have that lifted up, then you're gonna break off about a third of the bottom packet here, like you can see. Move that to the top above the break. Again, break off, bottom half now. Move that to the top and everything under the break now, take it and move that to the top. So it looks like you're losing it somewhere in the center. When in actuality, you've kept their selected card on top, Jack of Diamonds. The uh, one of the jokers is on top as the second card face up and the last joker is on the bottom face up. That's how you want the deck. And again, you're doing this while you're going through your, your patter, right? So first card selected, lost somewhere in the deck, sandwiched between the two jokers. Second card is now selected. Uh, just go through, as you push through, you wanna make sure you push a chunk of cards off here because you don't wanna reveal that joker. They have a second card selected. Let's just say it's five of clubs. So first card was Jack of Diamonds, right? Jack of Diamonds, I remember that. And the second card is five of clubs. So spectator number two has that card. They leave it face down on the table and you throw the cards on top of that card. Okay, be sure not to flip this packet up and then put the card in. And obviously you know why, as you just saw, 
This is facing the wrong way. We don't want the spectator to know that. So you turn the five of clubs face down, throw the rest of the deck on top. Now you can pick it up and turn it face up. And you show there's the five of clubs. This is where the more technical stuff kind of feeds right in. The move we're gonna be doing is the halo cut. So what the halo cut does is it gives the deck a cut while keeping a card in place, either the top or bottom card in place. So for example here, we have the Jack of Diamonds on top and uh, we wanna give this deck a cut, but retain that Jack of Diamonds on top of the deck. So what's gonna happen is uh, the way that I do it, I did it slightly differently on in my performance because of how angle sensitive it kinda is with the camera looking down like this. So what I do and what I do normally and what I did in my performance is I slid this deck forward a small amount so that the Jack of Diamonds you can kind of see here, right? And by the way, if you want a full tutorial on the Halo Cut, I'll put the link to it on the screen. I did release that, so it's much more in depth. Um, so we move that up slightly, as you can see here. Then I give the deck a cut. So I take the rest of these cards, not including this, and I swing cut. So I swing cut this whole packet, grab it with this hand here, and I'm just using uh, this index finger on top and thumb here to grab this whole packet like this, and then I complete the cut. One more time. Again, we've just sandwiched that. We, we've just, uh, this card was put down. We put the deck on top of it, turned this face up, slid the top, or now I guess in this case, the bottom card down a little bit here. Then we cut the remaining packet, right? This whole packet here. We cut it in half, did a swing cut, grabbed it with this hand, and the rest of the cards are thrown on top. What this does is it actually sandwiches that selected card between the two jokers, which I think is genius, absolutely genius. And then of course this card's still here. I just square everything up and then turn the deck face down. And of course in my pattern I'm saying, so the first card was sandwiched between the two jokers that are sandwiched in the deck. That kind of gives me some time to kind of shift this card how I want it. Then I turn it face down and I say, I'm gonna spread out the cards and what do you expect to see? They're of course gonna expect to see two face-up jokers with one card sandwiched right in between. I like to square up, have them pull out that card and then wait for that reveal and they see it was actually the second selected card, not the original card. At this point, they're freaking out. Ideally, what you want them to do is take out the card themselves, right? Take out this card themselves and as they're doing that, you wanna grab a pinky break underneath this top card. So I just do a pinky count like this, pick up that card. Uh, but if you're not comfortable doing a pinky count, you can always push off with your thumb and pull back, keep your pinky here, and uh, that's, you just get a pinky break underneath the top card. If you want a tutorial on the pinky count, link on screen as well. So you have that there. You return the two jokers here and ask them to look at their card. They have the five of clubs. The story I like to go with is the two jokers always find the spectator's card but they always find the most recently selected card. So in this case, the most recently selected card was the five of clubs. Now, uh, now that you have a pinky break, right? You return the two jokers on top of the deck. If you pick everything above the pinky break up, you have a pack of three cards. Peel off one joker. I hold the cards in a battle grip, thumb on the bottom, these two fingers on top. Peel off just the top card, leaving these two together showing as one. And you say, so now we have the two jokers. They have to find the first selected card. Now that you've peeled this off, put this card on top of the deck, put this packet of two on top of the Joker, give this deck one more swing cut, and then of course, as you go through, that card will be sandwiched. So spectator number one's card will be sandwiched between the two Jokers. Take it out, have the spectator again, take the card out themselves because that's just a more powerful effect. And once they take it out, they find their selected card and they will go nuts. Boom. For more fun tricks to try out, click on this video right over here. You might love it or hate it. I don't, you don't know until you try it. A huge shout out to all my Patreon producers and thank you. Love you. See you soon.